السلام علیکم ڈیئر اسٹوڈنٹس آئی ایم فرحین یامن ورکنگ ایس کو ٹیچر ان ڈپارٹمنٹ آف باٹنی یونیورسٹی آف ایجوکیشن لاہور ٹو ڈس ٹاپک وچ وی آر گوئنگ ٹو ڈسکس ہیز بین ٹیکن فرام اے کور سبجیکٹ آف باٹنی دیٹ از پلانٹ سسٹمیٹکس اناٹمی and development the course code for the subject is b o t n triple one two the topic which we have to discuss today is uh, related to structure and development of microgametophyte previously we have gone through the whole process of formation of microspores and formation of those microspores will ultimately lead to formation of microgametophyte and this is the main thing which we are going to discuss in our today's lecture so now Topic we are moving to our lecture the contents for the contents include the concept of microgametophyte that what is microgametophyte and then we will move towards pollen formation then pollen maturation and afterward we will talk about the dehiscence of anther which will ultimately lead to the discussion of types of dehiscence then we will talk about pollen morphology pollination and finally the pollen tube formation so we will start with clearing our concept related to microgametophyte previously we have studied that microspores formed as a result of division of microspore mother cells and those microspores mature to form pollen grains these pollen grains represent the first cell line of microgametophyte or male gametophyte these microgametophytes then produce male gametes or sperms that means if our topic of concern is development uh, or formation of microgametophyte definitely here we have to talk about formation of pollen pollen formation is the result of two sequential stages one is the microsporogenesis and second is the microgametogenesis microsporogenesis as we already know is the development of microspores from microspore mother cell the first sequence stage for the formation of pollen we have discussed in our previous lecture the second part is the microgametogenesis that is the development of pollen grains from microspores that means if we are talking about microgametogenesis it comprises events that lead to the progressive development of microspores into mature microgametophytes containing gametes if we talk about the pollen maturation then this process begins with the expansion of the microspore cell that is 
commonly associated with the formation of a single large molecule the vacuolation is accompanied by the displacement of the nucleus of the microspore to an eccentric position against the microspore wall as you can observe in this figure there is a tetrad of microspores and after separation it releases microspores now this is a released microspore this released microspore contain a centrally placed nucleus the first step in the maturation of pollen is the displacement of this nucleus to an eccentric position by displacement to against the microspore wall here you can observe that this nucleus has been displaced from its original position and this displacement is because of vacuolation because a large vacuole has occupied its central position so this is the first step in the maturation of the pollen in this position the nucleus undergoes first pollen mitosis that results in the formation of two unequal cells each cell containing a haploid nucleus these two unequal cells they are uh, one is large vegetative cell and second is the small generative cell as you can observe here this is the large vegetative cell and this is the small generative cell these two unequal cells are formed by the division <coughs> of the microspore nucleus this generative cell first remains attached uh, to the wall just like this but after some time it detaches itself from the wall and it becomes engulfed by the larger vegetative cell hence forming a cell into a cell structure the engulfed generative cell divide and say once more by mitosis cell structure to form the two sperm cells which are completely enclosed within the vegetative cell cytoplasm either before pollen is shed or within the pollen tube generally the microspores are shed from microsporangium in two celled stage however in some other cases the generative cell divides later to produce two male gametes okay here uh, we have a complete diagram that is showing the whole process uh, of pollen formation uh, the first step is microsporogenesis and the second is uh, micro gametogenesis as you can uh, see here this pollen formation uh, starts uh, with the division of the microsporocyte that results in the formation of uh, uh, tetrad of microspores here you can see here and after uh, release uh, this microspore can be uh, described here as this released microspore contain a central nucleus and as we have discussed in this case the first step is the uh, displacement of the nucleus to the uh, eccentric position due to vacuolation then the second step uh, was uh, the de uh, uh, division of uh, this uh, cell uh, for the formation of two unequal cells Uh, one larger cell was that was vegetative cell and the smaller was generative cell uh, then 
this generative cell it becomes embedded uh, in the vegetative cell uh, which we call a cell within cell structure now uh, this pollen is at bicellular stage sometimes division uh, in this uh, nucleus takes place uh, resulting in the formation of two sperm uh, cells and if the two sperm cells are formed with the vegetative cell now this pollen mature pollen is uh, considered as a tricellular pollen so uh, this figure is showing the complete picture of uh, pollen formation from microspore mother cell up to the uh, mature pollen uh, after uh, the pollen has formed now it is the time for uh, the shedding of the pollen uh, definitely it will take place after the dehiscence of the anther wall that shedding will take place when there will be dehiscence of anther after maturation pollen grains exert pressure from within on the wall of anther resulting in the bursting of anther and release of pollen grain this dehiscence of the anther is divided into several types first type of dehiscence is longitudinal it is based on the bursting of the anther lobes when anther lobes burst in longitudinal direction then that will be longitudinal dehiscence of anther it usually found in datura the second type is transverse when anther lobes burst transversely then the type is transverse dehiscence which is found in osmum The third type is porous dehiscence. In this case dehiscence takes place through pores. For example in solanum. The fourth type of dehiscence is volvular. This dehiscence takes place by one or more walls just like shutter of a window here we have uh, an image that is showing all four types of dehiscence methods of anther this is the transverse dehiscence where the bursting uh, takes place transversely and this is the longitudinal dehiscence where the bursting of anther lobe is in longitudinal direction uh, here the bursting is from pores so this is poricidal dehiscence and this is uh, the volvular dehiscence after dehiscence <coughs> pollen are shed shedding of pollen takes place on the female portions of the flower but before going through uh, that portion we will uh, talk about a general morphology of a pollen grain if we see a pollen grain that has a very distinct wall its wall has two prominent layers the outer 
wall is thick and hard which is made up of a very specialized material that is known as sporopollenin sporopollenin is considered as the most resistant material this layer is known as exine This layer is very hard and thick but at certain points it possesses certain thin areas which are known as germ pores and through these areas pollen tube grows This exine is further subdivided into two layers the outer one is sculptured layer and is known as sexine and the inner one is non sculptured known as nexine inner to the exine is a thin and delicate layer which is entine and it is made up of pectin and cellulose size range for the pollen grains is from 5 microns to 200 microns at maturity these pollen grains can be two celled or three celled as we already have talked about this and they contain a large central nucleus with the dense cytoplasm in this a uh, figure there is a structure of pollen grain that is showing the outer and inner wall uh, you can observe here exine uh, and inner to the exine is entine and this exine contains uh, several thin areas which are uh, known as germ pores from where the pollen tube enters so this was a uh, general morphology or structure of a pollen grain next uh, we are going to discuss uh, the process of pollination pollination refers to the transfer of uh, pollen grain from anther to the female part of the flower that is stigma and this process is known as pollination here uh, you can observe uh, the transfer of uh, pollen grain these pollen grains are shed from the anther and they are uh, going to shed and fall off over the top of the stigma uh, this process uh, is non as pollination that takes place by several means when pollen grain sheds on the stigma it germinates and form a specialized narrow tube which is known as pollen tube these pollen grains when they fall on stigma they absorb water and some other materials from stigma and style and as a result they swell up this swelling results in creation of internal pressure and due to this internal pressure exine ruptures at the germ pores and due to this rupturing entine protrudes out in the form of a pollen tube and it grows downward through the style as you can see here again that these are the two sperm uh, nuclei which are formed by the division of this uh, nucleus Uh, these nuclei along with this nucleus they are moving downward with the growth of the uh, pollen tube 
and they are reaching uh, towards the female portion of ovule vegetative nucleus lies at the tip of the pollen tube but in some cases it is present behind the male gametes this pollen tube and all its contents they constitute the structure that is male gametophyte or microgametophyte in this diagram uh, you can uh, clearly observe that how the pollen grains are shedded over uh, this stigma and after shedding these pollen grains they germinate and they uh, start to form a pollen tube here you can see the forming a pol formation of pollen tube this pollen tube grows downward and ultimately it enters into the ovule this pollen tube takes the constituents or contents of uh, male uh, reproductive portions along with it and transfers it, it to the female portion for fertilization so this was all about that how pollen are formed and how they are uh, shed after dehiscence of anther and then how they germinate to form a very specialized uh, tube uh, which is pollen tube that carries the contents of the pollen for the fertilization purposes here you can observe all these pollen uh, tubes which are carrying the male gametes okay this was all about the topic here we have uh, references uh, thank you so much